Hello friends, welcome back again. This is Lindsay. Like I said, I have more books for you. I've just uploaded the roses, the books I have for your journals that are all on roses. So some of those might still be in the shop when you're watching these. You might want to check that out. The link is below. But here we go. More flower books. This is Floral Botanical Garden Books Part 1. Uh, there is one more part of flower books before we get into the next one. I try to get a lot of flower and garden books because I think they're so versatile. Like I said in the rose one, every junk journaler should have at least two to three rose books. But flower books, oh, I would say six to eight minimum because there are so many different kinds of flowers, so many kinds of photos and illustrations. Every year and decade has its own color feel and everything else. So let me show you what I got for you. Here's the first one, Taylor's Pocket Guide to Perennials for Shade. So it's kind of a small one, which is nice to have smaller pages sometimes. Um, this is in 1989 and it has all of these pictures. They're great to just tuck in, like rip a page out and tuck in a pocket or to make journal cards or um, if you have any of those punches that are kind of the ornate labels, they would be beautiful as well. There's a lot of those. And then in the back, there's like uh, glossary and things like that. These are wonderful for collaging on journal pages and tags and things like that. So that's just a little one. And then I have, I think I've sold these before. I have one amazing, amazing finds whenever I can get them. Golden Guide to Flowers. Um, so I just picked up one this time and uh, the shop I go to has a section with these and try to get some when I can. This is a 1950. So I just think it's just so beautiful. Oh, look at these pages. I, I just love them. I've used um, these. I love using these to tuck in pockets. Look at those colors. Oh true fine from 1950 so I've got one of those I also have Taylor's guide to shrubs if you saw I have two of these in the roses Taylor's guide to roses this one is sh shrubs very very uh similar this is 1987 um this one though in the back it's not just words there's little black and white drawings which is really cute and then there's the whole color section so you have all of these different plants and shrubs that are wonderful for journal cards. I like backing these with ledger paper or coffee dyed paper, stitching around them. Um, can cut them out and just tuck them in pockets and things like that. So I've got one of those for you guys. Then I found this one I thought was really interesting. This is Plants of Colonial Williamsburg, How to Identify 200 of Colonial America's Flowers, Herbs, and Trees. And look at these, look at these little illustrations, of these colonial flowers and a little bit about them. I thought they would be wonderful for fussy cutting out. So nice, there's a lot of them. So I found that one. And then there's this guide to garden flowers, 500 full color illustrations. So this one was super cool and I even thought about keeping it. I love the little um, backgrounds that they have. So this one, it goes like across the page like this for the information on each one. But there's so many things to cut out. Pages and pages and pages and pages and pages. Oh, and it looks like there's some ephemera in here too. So you got little, little things you could put in your journal. It's interesting what people tuck in books. That one's really neat. Then there's this pamphlet, Rocky Mountain Water water wow, Rocky Mountain wildflowers um, 1981 but this is really cool I really liked the look of it the booklet it still has like well over 50 pages but look at these images really cool just has a nice vintage look to it and then I have Taylor's guide to bulbs so we just saw shrubs but here's bulbs so pretty much the same setup. Here's all of the bulbs, um, hundreds of images, gorgeous. 
And then in the back, you have the black and white ones. These are so cute. So that, this was really unique. The Camellia, Camellia Treasury for Gardeners, Flower Rangers, and Exhibitors. Look at the cover. Look at the, the aging and the patina on it, the little colors. So I thought that would be so amazing for a vintage journal cover. The book is 1964. And there's all these cool black and white illustrations from the 60s. There's some color ones too. Really just different, look at that. Look at how pretty that is. And these pages have so much aging and patina to them. They would look great in journals. Just even the text ones, like if you rip this out and you fold it in half as a page in the signature, like even the, the lettering in the greenhouse, it's just, just so pretty. Look at that. So I thought that was really unique. I haven't seen one quite like this. So I picked that up for you guys as well. This one, the Butterfly Garden. And this is a lot of text, but it does have these illustrations, like drawn illustrations all throughout of butterflies. I thought they would just be so pretty to turn into journal cards or use as pages in the book. There's actually quite a few butterfly drawings. A lot of pages have them. So that's a wonderful, well, at least one, in my opinion, at least one or two butterfly books in your collection. Butterflies are perfect for journals. Then I have Eyewitness Garden Handbooks, Shrubs and Climbers, a photographic guide to more than a thousand plants. So there's a ton in here. These are wonderful for cutting out um, as journal cards, collaging, tuck spots. I love when they have these boxes you can cut out that give you the height and the native habitat, the cultivation. It's just kind of adding information into your journals. Whoever receives it gets to learn a little bit about these beautiful plants. There's a lot in this one. Then there is Flower Gardening Secrets, the Old Farmer's Home Library Almanac. This is cool. There's a lot of purples in these illustrations. Look at these pages are just great for adding. These are good generic garden botanical pages that go so well with so many journals when you wanna add book pages that are just a little unique, a little different. Look at how cool some of this, I love the purple. That's what's really unique about that. So that's really cool. Then we have Garden Handbooks Annuals and Biannuals, Biennials, Guide to More Than 500 Plants. So lots of little ones. They're great for snippets, collaging. There's quite a few big ones as well. All different sizes, which makes this really great. If you can't get if you can't afford to buy a lot of the books, this is a good one because you've got a lot of different sizes. So it's almost worth a couple books in and of itself because you're getting different sizes. So there's that one. Then I have a pocket guide to wildflowers of North America. So this is just wildflowers, lots of things to cut out, pages to use. These are great as pages, beautiful. And then how to reflower and care for 50 flowering plants. And this is like an old booklet. Look at how cool that is. I don't know the year. Super neat. Uh, let's see, Roman numerals, 1976. So it's from the 70s. I just thought it was so cool. Look, you know, it's in good condition. So I got that for you guys as well. And the last one in this video that I'm gonna show is Annual's Pocket Guide. These are beautiful because they're these borderless full page. So they're great for mini journals. They're great for making envelopes. And you have the full page florals like that. Like look at that one. If you have a cutting machine, like a silhouette or a Cricut, you can um, cut out like hearts or tickets, designs, things like that as well. So these are the ones in this video. Once this gets um, uploaded in all the, the books on my website, then I will film the next one, which will be more flower books. So, so much going on. If you want to order multiple ones throughout 
the day or the few days it might take me to upload all of the books that I have, that's fine. I will combine shipping. Um, and if there's any shipping overages more than $2, I'll refund that. So if you've ordered, a, you know, you ordered the ones you want from this lot so you don't lose it. And then, to, you know, you order some from the next lot. That's fine. I'll refund um, anything that needs to be refunded when I ship out. And I'll put them all in the same box or package so that... It just makes it super easy for everybody. Everybody gets what they want when they want it for the best price. Thank you so much for supporting me. Thank you for letting me, you guys let me do fun things like find these books for you. I mean, I could never justify buying all these books for myself, but when I know that there are thousands of you watching um, or potentially watching that would love these books, I know that I can purchase them and find them homes that will, they'll just be loved. They won't get um, discarded and thrown in, in the trash or um, anything like that, but they will find homes and they'll make wonderful journals. Thank you so much for watching.